Hey guys, before we get to the video, for more tips and tricks in the heating and air industry, please click that subscribe button. Thank you. Hey guys, Joshua Griffin Air serving the Middle Peninsula and the Northern Neck of Virginia and wanted to do a video because I get one question more than any other question it seems like. I get this question on my Facebook and my videos and everywhere and that is what is the best brand? Who's good, who's not? And one common trend that you'll see across our industry is most heating and air guys can just about all agree that the brand matters less than who installs it. So the installation or who installs it matters more than what brand you select. Of course, we all have our preferences. We may disagree on who's the best, but ultimately we can all agree that usually the installer matters more than the brand that they install. And so the question becomes, I've actually gotten this question, what does that mean? What does it mean to have a bad installer versus a good installer? And that's what this video is going to cover. In fact, if you found this video, we're gonna do a series of videos where we're gonna talk about bad installations, bad installers, and some examples that you as the homeowner can sniff out and find if you're getting a good installation or not. So check out this video, but check out the whole entire series. And our goal is to arm you, to help you figure out if you're getting a good installation or not. Stay tuned. Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about warranties. And when systems are installed by installers that do not do everything properly and how they may not be registering your warranty like they should, at Griffin Air, we will register the warranty for you. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing if they don't do it. You just wanna make sure that you have what you need to be able to register the warranty if the installer's not going to do it for you. Another thing would be accessories. So if you're installing a system and you're gonna have accessories accessories like an indoor air quality product, maybe an ionizer, a UV light, some sort of air cleaner. Maybe you're going to have some sort of Wi-Fi thermostat or some sort of surge protection. A lot of those accessories for you to have them warrantied, they need to be registered as well. And the last thing to keep in mind is there are warranties that are extended warranties outside of what your contractor may be offering. Companies like JB Associates, or even in some cases, the manufacturer manufacturer themselves will offer labor warranties being able to protect you in the future. And we're not talking about warranties like when you buy a whole house home warranty, when you bought your house and they're worthless. We're talking about an actual labor warranty or extended warranty that could go with your heating and air system that if there were an issue, you'd be covered. we're going to talk about when the installers are not educating the homeowners the way they should. In my opinion, if someone installs a new heating and air system for you, they should take a moment to give you a walkthrough of the system. Let's educate the homeowner, let them know what they've now purchased. It's sort of like when you buy a car, you wanna know what all the buttons on the dash mean. Same goes for your new heating and air system. And so when I, we install that system, we're gonna, at bare minimum, walk through the thermostat with that customer. We don't wanna have a call at midnight when the seasons change because the homeowner doesn't know how to operate this or that. And we get folks all the time that have not been using us and we'll teach them something about their thermostat and they'll say, man, no one ever told me that before and I've had this system for years. Another thing that we'll educate the homeowners on is making sure that they know where their filter locations are. So the installer should take a moment and let you know where your filters are, how often they should be replaced. It's usually written on the filter itself but just the installer taking that moment to show you that. Another thing is the installer should let you know what utilities are being used and what to expect with that. We've actually had customers come to us because they said their system isn't working only to find out they had another company out who did not tell them, oh, well, you have a gas furnace. You need to have your gas filled up and things like that. We've had customers say, I had no idea that I even had gas appliances in my home. I can't tell you how many times we've gone out to systems and it was the first time they've called us. The customer said, has something to the effect of, well, this system's never worked right. 
It's never worked right. Usually what that might boil down to is right from the very get-go, something wasn't taught to the homeowner the way it should have been, or something wasn't installed the way it should have been. Another thing the installer should do, in my opinion, is set the expectation for the homeowner of what kind of maintenance is gonna be needed on the system. Maybe cleaning the coils once a year or treating the drains, but at bare minimum, if you have things like a furnace, having the heat exchanger checked by a professional once a year, because that's a huge safety problem. I love when we come into a home and we tell the homeowner something and they say, no one's ever told me that. I'm so thankful that you now have told me or whatever. Another thing would be shutoffs in the system. So if there's an issue, how to shut things off, how to shut off the power, or how to shut off the gas or things like that. So if there is an issue, educating that homeowner, where are your shutoffs? If there's a problem, the homeowner should know how to handle those problems. Knowing that there's a light switch that supplies their furnace. I can't tell you how many times we've had folks call us and say, I don't have heat, only to find out that they accidentally flipped off the light switch that is actually the main form of disconnect for their furnace. The last thing that I think is pretty interesting is installers need to educate the homeowner on their drains. And we've had homeowners that have drains hanging out their soffits. It's their secondary drain. It's coming off their secondary drain pan. And the reason it's there is if the homeowner were to see water coming out of it to know that there's a problem because water should not be coming from that drain. But no one ever told them that. We've had folks that'll say, well, yeah, I've had water dripping from that drain right in front of my kitchen window for a long time. And no one ever told me that I should call someone if I see water dripping from that drain. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. The last thing I'll say is if you're in the market for a new heating and air system and you're in Virginia in the Middle Peninsula or the Northern Neck, give Griffin Air a call. We'll give you a free estimate and the best warranty in the area. But if you're not in our coverage area, check out my new website. I've even got a little banner up here, newhvacguide.com. Check out that site because we've put so much information on there. It's as if I wrote a book telling folks, hey, here's the good and the bad, avoid this or that. I've even got a whole page called no-nos, things to stay away from. And so before you spend thousands, check out that website. And finally, for more tips and tricks in the heating and air industry, click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.